the horrifying terroristic attacks of 9-11s may have been averted if this man, John P. O'Neill, had not lost a briefcase. He served as the FBI's special agent in charge and just 20 days before the attacks, took on the role of head of security for the World Trade Center. Who was this man? And why did he transition to a new role shortly before the attacks? Which earlier attacks on the World Trade Center did he investigate? Why was he investigating bombings in Saudi Arabia? And finally, why was the briefcase, which reportedly contained no information about the impending WTC attacks, so significant? Let's dig deeper into these questions and unravel some mysteries of this horrifying story. First, a few words about Mr. O'Neill. He started his career in the FBI back in the early 1970s, not as a top agent, but as a fingerprint clerk, later to become a tour guide. But by 1976, he'd climbed the ranks and became an agent tackling white collar crime, organized crime, and even some foreign counterintelligence. You know, the usual FBI starter pack. The real deal started with his 1995 promotion when he became the chief of the counterterrorism section in the FBI's DC headquarters. Being the chief of the counterterrorism section is like being the head chef in a kitchen, except instead of sous chefs, there are secret agents. And instead of knives, there are, well, actually there are still knives. One of the most pivotal moments in his career was the investigation of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. A van with 1,336 pounds urea, nitrate, hydrogen gas, enhanced explosives was detonated beneath the North Tower. The intention was to topple it into the South Tower, taking down both skyscrapers and killing tens of thousands of people. Thankfully, that plan didn't fully materialize, but it still resulted in the tragic loss of six lives, including a pregnant woman and over a thousand injuries. Had the van been parked closer to the WTC's poured concrete foundations, the terrorists' plan might have succeeded. Guess they didn't have a good parking app. The main culprit behind this was Ramzi Ahmed Youssef, a convicted terrorist who, interestingly, was a nephew of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the key planner of the 9-11 attacks. Talk about a family reunion everyone wants to avoid. Both were affiliated with Al-Qaeda, an organization O'Neill became deeply committed to investigating ever since. O'Neill's expertise in counterterrorism, especially concerning Al-Qaeda, led him to be assigned as an investigator of bombings in Saudi Arabia. During the late 1990s and early 2000s, Al-Qaeda executed several attacks targeting U.S. interests in Saudi Arabia and other global locations. One such significant attack was the 1996 Kobar Towers bombing, which resulted in the death of 19 U.S. servicemen and left hundreds wounded. Saudi Arabia is a harsh country, I know that, I've been there. Well, not really been there, but I did eat a lot of shawarma, so I know what I'm saying. O'Neill's relentless investigations were part of a broader U.S. initiative to monitor and counteract Al-Qaeda's operations. He was firmly convinced of the grave threat Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda presented to U.S. national security. His role often required liaising with Saudi officials and intelligence entities since Saudi Arabia was not only a target of Al-Qaeda's attacks, but also the homeland of many of its members. John O'Neill was like the Sherlock Holmes of Al-Qaeda, minus the deerstalker hat and the violin. His relentless pursuit to understand this group made him the go-to man within the U.S. intelligence circles. He wasn't just about catching the bad guys, he wanted to stop them in their tracks before they could strike again. Because after all, prevention is better than, well, you know the rest. Now, in the late 90s, O'Neill had this gut feeling that the U.S. was in for some major attacks, and he even thought big landmarks like the World Trade Center could be on the hit list. But here's the thing, his hard-charging style of doing counter-terrorism didn't sit well with everyone. Some folks at the FBI thought he was pushing too hard, maybe even stepping out of line with his bold strategies and calls for global teamwork. A lot of O'Neill's detective work took him to Saudi Arabia, but when it came to dealing with them, man, was he frustrated. He felt the Saudis weren't cooperative at all when it came to fighting terrorism, and he did not hesitate to let anyone, including Saudis, know about that. This whole situation made things pretty awkward diplomatically and didn't exactly make O'Neill Mr. Popular back home. Fast forward to the months before 9-11. O'Neill was picking up on some serious red flags in the intel world, hinting at a major terror plot, but it seemed like his alarms were falling on deaf ears. Then in a twist straight out of a spy movie, O'Neill's briefcase full of top secret stuff got swiped in a hotel burglary in May 2000. I mean, who needs Netflix when real life is this thrilling? Can you imagine the panic? Luckily, 
It was found soon after, and nothing inside was missing or even touched. But the damage was done. This incident put a big dent in O'Neill's rep. Feeling the heat and the weight of it all, he figured it was time to hang up his FBI badge. What's heartbreaking is that amidst the drama over the briefcase, his warnings about potential terror attacks got sidelined even more. Looking for a way to better shield the World Trade Center towers, and let's be real, lured by a fatter paycheck, O'Neill jumped into a new gig as the head of security at the World Trade Center. This was on August 23, 2001. He genuinely believed he could amp up the WTC's security game to fend off any future terror threats. Switching jobs is tough. Switching to a job as the head of security at the WTC is like becoming the captain of a ship. You're in charge, but you also have to watch out for icebergs. Or in this case, much worse. One day in late August, he was chatting with his buddy Chris Isham about the new job. Isham, trying to lighten the mood, quips, at least they're not gonna bomb it again, nodding to the 1993 bombing. O'Neill, with an eerie sense of foresight, shot back, they'll probably try to finish the job. And man, was he spot on. Tragically, on September 11, 2001, O'Neill lost his life in the very towers he was trying to protect. Until his last breath, he was a hero helping evacuate people to safety during the chaos. John O'Neill's life was a testament to the power of intuition, dedication, and an unwavering commitment to the safety of others. His journey, from the fingerprinting desk to the heart of counterterrorism operations, showcased a man who was always a step ahead, always sensing the pulse of impending danger. Even in the face of adversity, skepticism, and personal setbacks, O'Neill never wavered from his mission. True heroes aren't defined by the accolades they receive, but by the lives they touch and the difference they make. Let us honor his memory by striving to be more vigilant, more compassionate, and more dedicated in our pursuits, ensuring that his sacrifices and those of many others are never in vain. As we remember him and the countless others who gave their lives on that fateful day, let us commit to fostering a world built on understanding, unity, and resilience.